So I guess we'll file this video under game devlog. This is not a game development channel by any means, but it is a video game channel and uh, we have dabbled in game development before. Like many of you remember the Maiden game that I was working on. And I did start posting some more videos on Twitter of my recent foray into Godot, the game engine. And I'm happy to say that I've finally, finally broken through and immersed myself into an IDE, an integrated development environment. I finally got into using a game engine. I want to make something similar to uh, the kitchen demo from Resident Evil 7. Like this spooky house kind of walking sim where there's a bunch of secrets to uncover that goes deep. And being able to finally use a game engine to leverage a lot of the development headaches that I experienced before is certainly helping. I feel quite uh, empowered getting deeper into this game engine. So some of you were asking, well, if you wanted to do this, what has taken so long? Like why are you having these difficulties getting into a game engine? I went to school, college at UCSB for computer science. And we started off with Java, went into C and C++, algorithms, operating systems, that sort of thing. But I was always used to programming line by line. Like in my Java class, uh, I was programming with Notepad and the command prompt. When I started working um, for, in web development and building web applications, some of my colleagues were using Dreamweaver and I was still doing everything manually by hand. There's a benefit to doing it this way. You have much more control, but the problem is that um, since I never got into an integrated development environment, I am horribly bad at using tools that other people have made in order to accomplish the same task. Being able to program line by line and being able to use a game engine, while there is some crossover, they're two different but related skills. It's sort of like the difference between working at a construction site versus working at a uh, materials and tool manufacturing company. The construction site is the game engine. It's the sandbox where you take all the tools and materials from other sources and then you stitch them together. You know, you don't necessarily know how the power drill works or how the 2x4 was put together, but you don't need to know. You just need to know how to use those tools and materials once they are already in that sandbox. And for the longest time, I tried to get into game engines. I started off with Unreal Engine, like many people recommended, follow the tutorials online. Uh, then I switched, tried to switch over to Unity. Didn't have much luck there. The tutorials were, for the most part on YouTube, not very good. This is one thing I absolutely, absolutely fucking hated about programmers in college and even now, is that they are so used to dealing with abstract concepts that they live so deep inside their own heads, if it's clear to them, they make the assumption that it must be clear to everyone else. Like when I watch Unreal Engine and Unity tutorials or Blender tutorials, I get shit like this. Like I'm just trying to put a freaking ground and drop a, a cube with some physics. Like I'm trying to do the Hello World version of a game engine and you give me this shit? I was so, so lost. So a couple years ago, I built this kind of Castlevania platformer thing where you throw boomerangs, you jump, you can super jump, you can dash, but I built all of this line by line. Some of you might remember this, the Maiden game that I was working on, and I also coded this line by line. I had to build the entire visual novelization game engine from scratch. And, you know, it basically tried to simulate a 3D environment. Essentially, every single spot you stand on, there's a forward image, a right image, a back image, and a left image. And then as you move forward, those snapshots would change. I would literally boot into Resident Evil Village and the House Ben Vento section, move a couple of steps, take a snapshot front, right, back, and left. And then move forward again, and then front, right, back, and left. But the thing is that it's not really 3D, it's just sort of simulating 3D. And you know, the snow stuff was just another layer on top. It's a, basically a web game, but packaged into a Windows executable. It was made on the Electron platform, and that's the reason why the CPU usage was just so high. I've always regretted that I wasn't able to make this on a game engine, because number one, once you get past the high barrier to entry, it would have made the development so much easier. 
And by extension, I would have been able to focus on the important, more narrative, storytelling important parts of the game that I really love so much. But it's out there, it's done, it's now on itch.io. Lately, I've been able to get into uh, a game engine via Godot. So I started off making this very, very simple marble maze game where the whole point is to collect coins. And if you uh, touch those purple things, it's a game over. I added in like this interpolated camera that uh, dynamically reacts to, you know, like uh, collision points and such. I implemented this this uh, relative camera perspective. There's a barrier to entry for getting into game engines that I don't think a lot of YouTube game development channels can do very well. They don't explain it very well, you know, but it was really cool. Once I got past this point, I thought, oh, shoot, can I build out a more realistic type of 3D environment? Like, ultimately, I want to be able to build like a house on the hill kind of thing, or maybe even like an outdoor spooky forest environment. But I do recommend that if you're trying to get into it, that you focus only on the game engine environment. And I recommend Godot as a good starting point. As opposed to dealing with this stuff, I was able to finally create uh, this. You know, with like actual grass physics and such, uh, and a path tracer for the, like some butterflies flying around with a little bit of good luck finding the right tutorial for Godot. And with a little bit of tenacity, I was able to finally create this type of uh, just very basic, you know, scenery. I basically just took the assets created by other people and the shader code, for example, from uh, third party sources and just found a way to stitch them into the actual project. I was able to add a skybox and some you know, ambient occlusion and tone mapping with you know, god rays and all that stuff that I, I really don't understand fully and that's the thing i don't need to understand the stuff fully and exactly how it works i just need to know how to stitch it together into an environment to create the kind of look that i'm going for and that's been the biggest struggle up until this point you know the shader for example you can see that there's a, a weird ghosting effect due to the refraction of the water so i have no idea where this game development uh, journey goes i'm gonna keep pushing i'm gonna keep going down the rabbit hole trying to ultimately create that kitchen demo-like uh, sim game that I wanted to make. But I feel a lot better now knowing that I have finally found my way into Wonderland, right? I finally got past that first threshold of getting more comfortable with the game engine environment itself. And now that I've jumped down the rabbit hole, I want to see how deep it goes.